How's it going everybody? It's your bro here. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how we can create a game of tic-tac-toe using Java. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Your support will help keep this channel running. All right, everybody, let's create a game of tic-tac-toe. So I'm going to go to File, New, Java Project to create a new project. I'll call this tic tack toe and click finish don't create a module then within this project folder i'm going to create a new class and i will call this class main then check this public static void main checkbox and then we're going to create another class so new class and i'll call this class tick tack toe and click finish. Okay, let's create an instance of tic-tac-toe within our main class. So within the main class, I'm just going to get rid of this comment because we don't necessarily need this. Let's create an instance of our tic-tac-toe class. So we're going to type in the name of the class, tic-tac-toe. We'll need a name for this instance. I'll just call this tic-tac-toe, all lowercase, but it doesn't really matter what you call it, equals new tic-tac-toe. I'm gonna get real sick of saying tic-tac-toe by the end of this video, just so you know. All right, so that's everything we need for this main class. Let's head to our tic-tac-toe class. We'll need a few imports before we begin working on this class, so make sure you have at least these four imports. And now next to this class definition, we'll want to implement the action listener interface. So right after tic-tac-toe, we're going to type in implements action listener. And currently this is going to be underlined red. That's fine, we're going to fix this in just a moment because we're implementing an interface. So if there's any declared methods, we need to utilize them within our program. So let's create the constructor for this class. So I'm just going to type in the name of the class followed by a set of parentheses and curly braces. This is the constructor. We'll just leave this empty for now and fill this in later. So we'll also need to add unimplemented methods so we need to utilize this action performed method since we're utilizing an action listener interface. Next, we'll create a method that will determine whose turn is first. And this will be random. Will it be X's turn first or O's turn? So let's create a public void method called maybe first turn. And we'll just declare this but not actually fill this in quite yet. And next, let's create a method that will check to see if there are any winning conditions or if any player has currently won. So we'll do the same thing, public void check. And now what we're going to do is create two methods, one if X wins and the other if O wins. And we're going to check to see who wins within this check method. And at the end, we'll just call one of these win methods basically. So we'll create one for x first. So public void x wins, and we'll set up some parameters. So we're going to receive the winning combination of buttons basically. So what buttons did the user press to actually win this game? And we're actually going to color these green to display the winning combination basically. Uh, so we'll just set this up to be integer values. So we'll set up these parameters with int a, int b, and int C, and that should be good. And let's do the same thing for O, but we can just copy this and paste it and change X to O. Okay, so that should be good. These are all the methods that we need. So let's just double check this. We have the constructor for tic-tac-toe. We have our action performed method, the first turn method, the check method, X wins and O wins. So let's start before the constructor and declare a few things. Now, with this program, we're going to determine whose turn it is first randomly. So we're going to create an instance of the random class to help us with that. So random, and we'll call this random, equals new random. Now we'll need a J frame, so J frame, and we can call this frame equals new J frame. And let's create a panel to hold the title. So this will be a J panel and we'll call this title underscore panel equals new j panel 
And let's create another panel to hold all of the buttons that we have. So J panel, and we'll call this button underscore panel equals new J panel. And we'll want a label to serve as maybe a text field to display a message of some sort. So J label, and let's call this text field equals new J label. All right, we're going to want an array of J buttons. So we're going to type in J button, then straight braces, because this is going to be an array. And we'll call this buttons equals new J button, straight braces. And we actually need nine buttons. So within the straight braces, we can just type in nine because we don't need any more or less than nine for this game. And lastly, we're going to create a Boolean variable called player one underscore turn. So this is going to be true if it's player one's turn or false if it's player two's turn. So it's not really necessary to have a Boolean for player two's turn because one's enough. If player one is false, then it's player two's turn basically and vice versa. So that should be everything we need to declare before we move on to the constructor for the tic-tac-toe game. So within the constructor, let's start with creating the J frame first. So we're going to type in frame dot set default close operation. And then within the parentheses, J frame dot exit on close. Then we're going to set a size for this frame. So frame dot set size. And I think 800 by 800 would be good for the size for this frame. Okay. And then what we're going to do is type in frame dot get content pane. And then we're going to set the background color. So set background. Then we're going to type in new color. And then we can type in some RGB values. So I'm going to select something that's darker, like 50, 50, 50. So this is a lighter shade of black. Otherwise, if you want something generic, you can just type in like color dot, I don't know, red. Uh, but otherwise, you can be more specific and place some RGB values here. Okay, and then we're going to set a layout for this frame. So frame dot set layout. And I usually type in null, but what I'm going to do is type in new border layout. And then lastly, we uh, want to set the frames visibility to true. So frame dot set visible true. And then we're good with the frame. So let's move on to our text field. So after the frame, we're going to maybe first set the background color for our text field. So text field dot set background and then we can pick a color so new color and this is going to be the same process as what we did up here so i'm just going to pick maybe 25 25 and 25 for our rgb values and we can set the text color so what i'm going to do is type in text field dot set foreground and then new color. And I think I will pick the color of maybe green. So maybe 25, 255, and zero. Okay, and let's set the font. So text field dot set font, new font. So I'm going to pick ink free this time. So that's the font style. And maybe I'll have this be bold, so font.bold. I think 75 would be good for a font size. Okay, and then I'm going to set the horizontal alignment. So text field dot set horizontal alignment j label dot center. So remember, we're not using uh, no layout manager. We're using a border layout for this. Okay, then let's set some text. So text field dot set text, and I'll just display the title of the game for now. So 
tick, tack, toe. And what I'm going to do is type in text field dot set opaque to true. So this is everything we need for the text field. We're going to add this text field to a title panel, and then eventually we're going to add this title panel to our frame. So let's work on the title panel next. So we're going to type in title underscore panel dot set layout, and we're going to use a border layout. So new border layout. And then for the next line, we can set the bounds for this panel. So I'm going to type in title panel dot set bounds, and we're going to place the coordinates of where we want this to start. So if we want to start in the top left corner, that is where X is zero, Y is zero. And for the length, maybe I will select 800 to match the size of this frame. And then for a height, maybe 100, that should be good. Okay, so then let's add our text field to our title panel and then add the title panel to our frame. So we're going to type in at the bottom title underscore panel dot add text field. And then we're going to type in frame dot add title underscore panel. And then let's run this and take a look. Okay, so what we have here is that this title panel is taking up the entire frame that we have. So since we're using a border layout, we can specify a border that this title panel can stick to basically. So if we want this title panel to stick to the top, when we add the title panel to our frame, what we can type in after this is comma, then border layout dot north. And when we rerun this, our title panel is going to stick to the top of our frame. And it's actually adjustable too if we were to resize the frame. All right, so let's work on the button panel next. So after the title panel, we're going to type in button underscore panel, and we're going to use a different layout, a grid layout. So we're going to set layout, and then within the parentheses, new grid layout. And we want this to be three by three since we have nine buttons. And let's also change the background color and honestly, I just feel like copying this and pasting it because I'm too lazy to type stuff out. And I'm going to change this to button panel. And maybe we'll change this to 150, 150, 150. It doesn't matter. We're going to be adding buttons to this so you can't see the color eventually. I just want to be sure that this panel is added. So I'm just going to make the color something drastically different. All right, then we need to add the button panel to our frame. So I'm going to type that after we add the title panel. So frame dot add, then we're going to add the button underscore panel. And let's take a look. Okay, that should be good. And this is going to be our button panel. And the reason that we colored it is just to test to see if it's actually appearing. So that should be good. Next, let's add all of the buttons. So let's work on these buttons before we add everything to our frame. And since we're dealing with an array of J buttons, we can easily use a for loop to take care of buttons one through nine for us. So let's begin by creating a for loop. So we'll create an index int i equals zero, and we'll continue this as long as i is less than nine, one for each button, and then increment i by one each time. And then within this for loop, we have a few lines to fill in. So we're going to take our buttons array at index i, and we're going to create a new j button. And then for the second line, we're going to add this specific button that we're working on to our button panel. So we'll type in button underscore panel dot add buttons at our current index. And then for the next line, let's set the font. So buttons at index I, and we will type in dot set font. And then within here, we can specify a new font. And for the font style, I will pick MV Bully, but pick a font that you like. 
And then after this, we can specify if we want this like bold or italic or anything. But I'll set this to be bold, I think. And then a font size, and I will pick 120. All right, and then we do not want these buttons to be focusable. So we're going to take buttons at index I, and we're going to set focusable to false. And lastly, we just need to add an action listener to each of these buttons. So buttons at index I dot add action listener, then within parentheses type in this. All right, so let's run this. And we get a nice grid of buttons and these are actually resizable too, so that's kind of cool. So now let's determine to see whose turn it is first. So we'll have this be random at the start of your game. So at the end of the constructor, let's call the first turn method. So first turn, and then fill in this method next. All right, so there's a few different ways we can do this. I'm thinking what we can do is just have the random class pick a random integer between maybe zero and one. If it's zero, it'll be player one's turn. If it's one, then it's player two's turn. So we can type in if then random dot next int and we want two numbers so we're going to type in two here so we'll get a random number either zero or one so if this number is equal to zero what we'll do is that we're going to take this boolean value player one turn and we're going to set this to true so player one turn equals true and then let's also change the text for the text field to reflect player one's turn. So one is X. So we're going to take text field dot set text. Then within parentheses, we'll just type in X turn. All right, then we'll need an else statement. So if it's not player one's turn, it must be player two's turn. So we can just copy this and we'll change true to false and text field dot set text to zero or O. And let's try this now to see if it works. All right, so it's O's turn. Let's try it again. And it is now X's turn. However, um, if you want to have that title display for a little bit before assigning a turn for somebody, we can easily just have this program sleep for a little bit. So what I'm going to do when we start first turn, I'm just going to take our thread and have this sleep for maybe 2000 milliseconds. And then we need to surround this with a try and catch block. All right, so let's try this now. So it says tic-tac-toe for two seconds, and then it assigns a turn to either X or O randomly. So this isn't entirely necessary, but if you want to add a delay before assigning somebody's turn, you can just add this here. So that's everything we need for our first turn method. So let's head to our action performed method. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to stick everything within a for loop. So this is going to run nine times whenever a button is clicked. So for int i is equal to zero. And then we will perform this as long as i is less than nine and then we will increment our counter by one. So we're basically going to be checking each of our nine buttons. So the first thing we'll do is if e dot get source is equal to buttons at our specified index of our for loop, then what we'll do is that we will check to see whose turn it is. So we'll need an if else statement. So with this line, I'm going to type in if player one underscore turn, and we don't need to say equals true because this is already a Boolean value. So if it's player one's turn, what we're going to do is that we're going to check to see if there is any text assigned to this button, because if somebody clicks on a button, we're going to change the text on that button to reflect either an X or a O but let's check to see if that button has some text first. So if this specific button, buttons at index i dot get text function 
is equal to, and then we'll just place a blank set of double quotes here. So what we'll type in within this if statement is buttons at index i. We're going to maybe set the foreground color. Set for ground, and then we'll pick a new color. So this is the color for x. Maybe I'll pick blue. So that is two, no, that's red actually, uh, 255, zero, zero. All right, and then let's also set the text. So buttons I set text to equal just a giant X. That should be good. And then we're going to flip player one's turn. So player one underscore turn equals false. And then for the next line, we're going to change the text field to display that it is now O's turn. So text field dot set text to O turn. Now let's do the same thing for player two who is O. So let's create an else statement right where this ends. So it looks like it ends right here. So we'll create an else statement and we're going to copy all of this and paste it within here. And we're going to change a few things. So let's have player X be red and player O be blue. So I'm going to change this value to zero and this one to 255 for blue. Set text to a giant O. Player one turn will be set to true. And then set text for the text field to X turn. Okay, and then the last thing that we should do is call our check function. Uh, so let's add that at the end of these if else statements. So we'll call the check function. But make sure you spell it right. Okay, let's test this out then. So it is O's turn first. And if we were to click one of these buttons, this is now O. Let's try it again with X and this is now X. This is pretty sweet. All right, so we'll want to check to see if we have any winning combinations. So that's what we're going to work on next within our check method. All right, guys, I'll be honest with you. This part of the project is going to be kind of a pain in the butt to code. So what we actually need to do is check to see if each of these winning combinations has text that all matches. But we're going to do a lot of copying and pasting though, so it shouldn't be too bad. So first, let's check to see if this first row has any matches, and then we'll do some copying and pasting right after that. So we're going to check using an if statement, and then add a set of curly braces after, and then let's add another set of inner parentheses. Let's check to see if buttons at index zero, that is our very first button in the top left corner, is equal to X. So we need to use the get text method and check to see if this is equal to the character capital X. And then we're going to add the and logical operator. And I'm just going to copy this and paste this. And we are going to change this next part to buttons at index one. Uh, but let me format this a little bit so it's neat and organized. Okay, and then let's do the same thing for buttons at index two. And then we can get rid of this last one. Okay, so that shouldn't be too bad. So what we're going to do if this first row has all matching X's, what we're going to do is call the X wins method. And then we need to send in some arguments. So these are three integers. So within the curly braces here, what we can type in is we will call the wins method and send in three integers, zero, one, and two, because that's the winning combination basically. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the other winning combinations and I'll walk you through it. And we're just going to copy this and paste it because I really don't want to do this by hand. Uh, so we'll check three, four, and five, and send these in as well. Then we're going to check six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, eight. 
and then 0, 3, 6. Okay, then we got 1, 4, and 7. No, not 72, 7. 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8. Zero four eight and then lastly two four six. And then we need to do the same thing for O, but we're just going to copy all of this and change just a few things. So we'll copy all of this and paste this right underneath. And we're going to change all X's to O's. And actually guys, there's a shortcut that'll let us change all capital X's to capital O's. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of this text. Then this is for the Eclipse IDE, but if you're using like IntelliJ IDEA, I'm sure there's something similar set up. So highlight all of the text that you want to look through, go to edit, find replace, and I'm going to replace all X's with capital O's. And then make sure the case sensitivity is on. Then I'm going to replace all. And now all of these capital X's within the O win conditions is now capital O. And we have to do the same thing for lowercase x. However, we do have a lowercase x within get text. So I kind of want to avoid doing that. So I'm just going to change these by hand real quick and change X to lowercase O. So this will only take one moment. So once you change all X wins to O wins within the O wins condition section, we can move on to the last few steps of this project. So let's fill in a few lines within the X wins method. So we need to indicate that the player X has won. So one thing that we can do is actually change perhaps the background color of the winning combination of buttons. So let's type in buttons at index A. And this is going to be passed in as an argument. And we're going to set background to maybe color dot green. And let's do the same thing for B and C, so buttons at index B and buttons at index C. And we'll want to disable all buttons so people can't keep playing. So we'll put this within a for loop and we'll do this for all nine buttons. So int i equals zero. We'll do this nine times. So i is less than nine and increment i by one. And then we're going to take our buttons at index I set enabled false. And then lastly, we're going to change the text field to uh, X wins. So text field set text X wins. And then let's copy this and do the same thing for O then we are just going to change set text to O. And that's it, that should be this program. So let's actually play this now. All right, here is our game. It is X's turn. I'm just going to start making up stuff. And here it is, the winning combination, X wins. All right, well, that's everything. So if you would like a copy of all this code, I'll post this in the comments down below. But yeah, that's how you can create a game of tic-tac-toe using Java. Hey you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learn something new, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.